All right. I was just talking on the phone with a guy, Barry, about uh, he's looking at buying a boat. He's got some that have 92 series and some that have 71s he's looking at. He pretty much understood the difference, but I thought, you know, if, if people don't know, this is a liner from a 71 series. This is a liner from a 92 series. Uh, the stroke is exactly the same in them. Um, the, the big difference on them is cubic inches. So 71 is 71 cubic inches per cylinder, 92 cubic inches per cylinder. So this 71 series liner can actually fit inside of a 92 series liner. Um, so this just shows you how much bigger it is. Now, can I get it out of there with one hand? Probably not. <laughs> Tip it over. Okay. So, other than that, differences. This is what's called a dry liner. So this actually goes into the block. The coolant cools the block, and then this is touching the block, and the, the temperature comes from here and then bleeds into the block, and then it's cooled from the coolant. This is what's called a wet liner, which means that there's O-rings that go here and here, and the coolant is directly touching this liner here. So the coolant is immediately removing the heat away versus this where you're removing from the block and this is touching the block. So it's a little bit more efficient. Um, but you also get cavitation issues if you don't use the right coolant. Uh, basically the coolant reaches the boiling point when it hits, it hits it and it explodes little pieces of metal away as a kind of a short way of explaining it. You'll notice on here that the liner ports are different heights on here. So this is much larger. I can, you know, you can stick a quarter in this one and this one you can't. That only has to do with this being a non, this is a non-turbo and this is a turbo. So even the turbo liners for 71 series have these small openings like that. Uh, you can take advantage of more of the power of the stroke on there before it has to let the exhaust gases out of the top. Um, because it's compressed air, it's more dense or whatever it's going through, it can delay a little bit. Uh, so these are larger, these are smaller. That has nothing to do with 92 series. Although I don't think I've ever seen a 92 series that I've worked on that's not a turbo. Um, I don't think I've never, I've never seen a, this kind of line. They probably make it, but I've never seen it. Um, but yeah, those are the big differences. So cubic inches for more power. Uh, the bottom end and is, is the same. So the bearings, that's why the bearings are kind of a weak link in the 92 series because you use the same bearing that you use on a 71. The rods are a little bit more robust and you can actually use the rod from the 92 series in the 71 series with the right piston on there. Uh, and have a little bit more robust uh, piston rod. So if you're ever doing a rebuild on a, a V series uh, 71, it's nice, especially if you're you know adding some extra horsepower to it, you get the, the 92 series rods in there. Uh, but these are, uh, I, I think that size difference will really show you, um, you know, how much bigger it is, especially when I stuck it inside there. Hopefully you appreciated that. But dry liner, wet liner, and then more horsepower, more cubic inches, obviously. That's the, the big difference. Again, that's gravel dust. That is not thing wasn't smoking. <laughs> All right, so we have a 1976 MCI 5 B as in boy. Super nice conversion. The bus is very straight. The 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 siding is incredible on it. And you're based out of Florida? Yes. Yep. So upgraded seat. Other than that, the driver area is very stock there. A little extra shelf for the cell phone and stuff that he's added. It's an automatic 8V71. This is not a turbo though, correct? No, not a turbo. Yeah. Super. Yep. Okay. So check out these seats. These are both recliners to beds, the sofas. It's all custom made. Marine vinyl on the ceiling. Full size refrigerator. Dinette. Kitchen sink. And then he has a induction cooktop and an air fryer and stuff that he uses here as the kitchen. 
He's got a small kitchen because he sacrificed some room there. There's a nice TV too. For an extra large bathroom. And his bathroom, the shower in here is incredibly large. For a bus. Shower heads can move up to extra high there. One of my very favorite features is his toilet paper dispenser, which is a cockpit voice recorder. He's a retired air traffic controller. I thought it was an awesome toilet paper dispenser. That's the best use of something I've ever seen. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, it stores an extra roll in it. <laughs> Macerator toilet. I like the, the sink. That's a great size for a bathroom sink. You see the faucet to the side? Yeah. And then tons of cabinet storage space. He is not lacking in the storage spaces at all. And then that's a king size bed, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So not a lot of room on each side, but there's still a little bit of room. Cabinets, cabinets, cabinets. Cabinets and drawers. And then the big TV over here also swings out and comes across here in the bedroom. Some under lighting. He's done a very, very nice job with this. Oh, you got it where it goes both ways? It goes both ways. And they're 2,000 pound capacity, which most of the ones on the market were like 1,000 pounds. And like my toolbox on the other side, John. <laughs> so, but it goes out either way. Oh, and here's one of the things, you know, everything you buy on those trays is extra and it has stoppers, one third, two thirds and all the way out. I'm like, do I really need that? <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll buy it. What I have learned is when you're on a slide of the road, if you unlatch that thing, it just takes off <laughs> <laughs> and you're usually like in this position and you just go, pow. So it catches it. One of the things I got with this guy and said, these are my concepts. One of it is, I didn't want holes in the bottom. So that's my power. I just have an extension cord, like a boat, poof, yeah. and then there's no hole in the ground. I didn't want the gravity feed, so. Is this here. generator bay, can you open this? I want to see how that thing's shoehorned in there, because, or is it locked? I got a key. <laughs> Wrong one. He had to make this door. He cut off the other stuff, made it, Put the parts back together again and made the door bigger. That is impressive. 10K. 10K, and that's a diesel generator. Yes, sir. And you said you had to cut the fuel tank like four inches off of it and squeeze it together and then weld it back together? Yes. <laughs> And luckily we did that because inside the fuel tank was all corroded. The intake tube was messed up. There was a few other things. So we cut the bottom off it, put a brand new bottom on it. Also, we changed the flange on the filler cap so I could put a locking gas cap on there. Okay. That way you don't have to put a lock on the outside and all that. So, because the flange is one of those old style flip things. Yep. So the MCI-5 here, he's got the little toad. Uh, more like a tadpole. No, wait, toads don't hunt, aren't from tadpoles. Um, toads, they call them a toad because it's toad behind. See a toad behind vehicle? Uh, T-O-W-E-D. <laughs> uh, but that's more like a wart. <laughs> that's just so little. Um, anyways, the bus. Uh, we're working on that. He's got problems. Uh, there's a wheel seal leaking. Uh, actually, axle shaft seal. So we're going to replace that. That's no big deal. And then uh, the main reason is here is his jake brakes. One side of his engine, the jake brakes are not working. So we'll get into that. Um, First thing I'm gonna do is check it, make sure it's not an electrical issue. Is the signal coming to the both sides of the head? There's two, you know, the left side and right side. Um, sometimes they have a switch where you can flip it and only one side works, and then you flip the switch and then both sides work. So you have half the ability, half the power. Um, that could be, you know, it could be just wired differently than what he knows. So we'll, we'll get in there and see, is it getting an electrical signal? It's an electric solenoid that opens. And this is, he said it's an 8V, but it's an automatic. If it's a six cylinder, there's only one cel slate, uh, solenoid in on each side, but if it's an eight V, then there's two solenoids. Um, and it, it would be weird that both wouldn't be working, uh, but not, you know, not unheard of. So we'll check the electrical side of it first. If it's not that, their Jake brakes are fired by oil pressure. Um, and if you don't have high enough oil pressure in there, or if there's an O-ring that's bad and the oil can bleed by the O-rings, then it doesn't create the pressure to open up like it needs to. So 
Uh, this should be a fun project, but unfortunately, I'm not going to get to it till Monday. It's Thursday right now. He just got here. It's, he drove all night long. It's super hot. Uh, it's heat index over 100 uh, today and tomorrow and the, the weekend. But uh, I, I don't normally work on the weekends. And tomorrow is uh, the big pour for the concrete. So I've been helping the concrete guys get everything over there going. Uh, and first at 5.30 in the morning, they're supposed to start pouring concrete. So uh, I'm not going to be working on it tomorrow. So then it'll be Monday that I get to it. So he's going to hang out here and camp and, and enjoy us. And uh, uh, we should have a good weekend here. Check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride. In on plenty of the silver sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. That bus grease monkey do his thing. Thirty years behind that barn, cause it don't run worth a darn. Watch that bus grease monkey make it sing. He knows in Detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Now he's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bring him buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. When he travels town to town looking on them old greyhounds. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in old Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?